Okay, well today, YouTubers, I'm going to replace the hard drive in my MacBook laptop. I'm not the world's biggest Apple fan, but I had the opportunity to get this machine new at a very, very good price after some newer models were introduced. And the only, the only bad thing about it is that it has a Seagate 80 gigabyte hard drive in it. And from what I've read about these, they are famous for dying left and right. And the one in my brother's MacBook actually did die on him rather abruptly despite being a model that wasn't explicitly mentioned as being particularly troublesome. Anyway, I had the opportunity to get a very good deal on a 160 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive, so I thought I'd make a video showing you how to install an upgraded hard drive in your own MacBook if you so desired. I've been very happy with this machine during the time I've owned it. It has had a few minor problems that were promptly taken care of under warranty, but the stupidest thing I ever did to it, I left it sitting out in the rain one night on top of my pickup truck cab. When I brought it in, the battery was completely discharged and it was no longer sleeping. I feared the worst, but after a day of sitting in front of a fan, it forgave me completely, which is pretty darn impressive for any laptop to do, especially when it's sitting on top of a truck cab in a pouring rain that lasts all night. But enough of that, let's get started. Okay, now after you've shut down the machine and made sure that it's completely turned off and not sleeping or anything else, otherwise you'll get quite a surprise, you need to start opening it up. And the first thing you have to do is take the battery out, and to do that you need a quarter. Normally I'd have to have the key keeper front me a quarter, but seems I found one today. Once you've got that done, you look in here and there's actually a little diagram that shows approximately what you're going to be doing. There are a total of three screws, one there, one here and one here that loosen this metal band that goes around the corner. The hard drive is actually behind here. You need a small Phillips screwdriver to undo these screws. And they won't come completely out. When you get them loose, they are captive, so they'll stay in the metal band a little bit. But you'll know that they're loose because the metal band will actually start to pop out a little bit. Let's see, I think that's all for that one. And then here's the last one here. And you can see it kind of popped out. And then you just gently grab that and kind of pull it away so it starts to do that. And then you lift it out. And here's your hard drive. There's actually a little white paper tape that if you carefully stick a screwdriver behind it, it pulls out and you can use that to remove the drive. Now if you plan to use the drive for something else, you might want to treat it carefully, or if you need to get your data off of it or anything else. You have your hard drive out. It comes in a little tray that is actually held to the drive by four screws. You'll need to remove those screws. They're all small Torx screws. When you finally get the hard drive free of its little tray, you can set it aside because you won't need it anymore unless you're going to pull data off of it or something like that. I'm actually going to put mine in an external enclosure a little later on. But do save this tray, and do keep your four screws. Okay, if you're a little smarter than I am, you'll have actually gone and obtained your drive before you pull your MacBook apart. I did, but I left it in the basement while I'm working upstairs. But another thing you might consider doing is running a copy of the uh, GRC Spinrite utility on the drive that you have purchased to make sure it's good, so that you don't get a bad one or have any unexpected problems down the road. Spinrite's not a magic bullet, but it can be extremely helpful to have it and use it on a new hard drive before you put it into service for something really really important. As to what kind of hard drive you should buy, well technically speaking you must have a serial ATA two and a half inch drive. 1.5 or 3 gigabyte rates of transfer are fine. Um, your MacBook will use the drive at its maximum ability depending upon how new it is. You can buy whatever brand of drive makes you happy. My personal preference is Western Digital. Okay, when you do finally get your hard drive back to your MacBook, go ahead and fasten the four screws, one at each corner of the drive, and put the little tray back on there. And then you're ready to put it back in the MacBook. You actually turn the drive upside down to do this, being careful not to press on or strain it. You have to make sure the little ribbon under here is tucked in and then you just gently slide it into place, give it a little press to seat it, and you're almost done. The only thing you have to do now is put this little metal strap back in place. Okay, putting a little metal strap back in place isn't too hard. There's a little tab on the end that seats inside the machine, and then you just push it up, turn the machine around here, 
and you seed it as best you can. It's a little springy, it may take a few tries, but you'll get it. Then start to fasten the screws. Then go ahead, put the battery back in the computer, make sure to press it down, then lock it in with your quarter. Once you've done whatever it is you're going to do with your old drive, like put it in an enclosure such as this one here, you're ready to reinstall your Macintosh computer's operating system software. You can do this from either the restore disks that came with the machine, you simply put them in the machine, turn it on, and follow the directions. You could actually migrate your drive using a tool like Super Duper or Carbon Copy Cloner, or you could install a fresh copy of the Mac OS and then move your data over manually or with the Migration Assistant. But whatever you choose to do, that's how you install a new hard drive in your MacBook laptop computer.